on this nostalgic episode of the NES Pursuit. This is old days of Pursuit right here. Ricky and I at I missed Golden this. West. Riff, Ricky, and Mort take to the dark in the quest for retro. Uh -huh. He's getting deals. He's getting deals without us. That's exactly what Mort. The boys strike pure gold as they come face to face with vintage toys that are priced to sell. Grail. It's just holy grail. Riff does something that may not be sanitary. Maybe you shouldn't be buying sheets from a swap meet, but I don't really care. You wash it, it's fine. Mort finds a holy grail that he needs to maximize his already complete Nintendo 64 collection. But there's a particular amount of them that were made with this little figurine. Get ready for broken hands, top tier toys, unbelievable boxes, and dead Ricky. This is the NES Pursuit. This is one of those mornings you, you hear about and you never believe. I'm a believer now. Fantastic, beautiful morning, and I'm excited for one specific reason. We're going back to the good old days. We're going to a straight up swap meet. No expos, no stores, no fluff. To a swap meet, I want to be there as early as possible. I want to be there when they come with the trucks and you just, sometimes you'll help them offload and, oh, what do you got? What do you got, sir? Hello, Mort. Where are you, sir? Uh, I ran over to, uh, to a, a group of uh -huh. He's getting deals. He's getting deals without us. That's exactly with Mort. With Ricky and Mort to explore and hope we find some retro goods. Oh, he's so excited to see Mort. Mort Guffman. That's how he started the last video. That's, that's Good morning. It. Let's go. How you doing, sir? No. So we're digging around, probably like. The second guy we get to, he has controllers. Not just any controllers, the Wii controllers and an Xbox 360 controller. Always good to get. Because, actually I won't even tell you guys why. <laughs> now if I can get them for five and under, I'll pick them up because GameStop will give me eh, about 12 bucks a controller for trading, which is not bad. So Ricky just found a couple of Wii remotes here at the swap meet for a very good deal. And um, he's buying them. And I'm jealous. Oh yeah, I paid five each. Went down to five. And you know what? There's a lot of stuff coming out that I need, which is Smash, Pokemon. Yeah, there's always stuff I need. So I just picked them up. Got these at this booth. I picked them up because it is pro day sale at GameStop. And they have a lot of figures I want. You know what? They'll give me 13 bucks for this and they'll give me, what is it? 10 each. 10 each on these. Ricky always plays it smart with controllers. He likes to pick them up so that he can take them in for trades at GameStop. So I spent 10 bucks and getting $30 credit. He's smart. I need to be doing that more often. He always comes up with that. That's picking. Yeah, people, people dog on the GameStop stuff a lot, but you can find really good trades. So cool. Welcome to the NES Pursuit. It's dishonoring to my wife. It's still early and not, nothing yet for me. Ricky, a couple little things, but you know, this is this it's, is this is old days of pursuit right here. Ricky and I at I missed Golden this. West. More you're the cameraman for the rest of the day. <laughs> They have the greatest bass riffs of all time. We're walking and our buddy Juan, secret game stash, calls Mort and is like, get over here now. We're like, what's going on? He's like, just get over here now. Juan said, hey, you guys gotta come to this booth. There are tons of vintage toys. We start running to 
wherever the heck Juan is. Luckily, he was Guys, on the same row, which was perfect. We run over to this giant booth with boxes everywhere, with people everywhere, with people just unloading boxes and boxes. There's a lot of there's a lot of knickknacks here. Every box that came out of this truck was filled to the brim with just random assorted toys. Star Wars. Yes, I love that movie. Last, last action hero, Arnold Schwarzenegger right here. Yo, yo. Literally boxes just full of it. You walk to the middle, there's Star Wars stuff. You walk a little more, there's Transformer stuff. And it's a heaven, I mean a heaven, filled with the coolest retro toys and knickknacks and collectibles and oddities and little treasures everywhere. This is this is like the most overwhelming one ever been this? in a place. There's, I mean, look at, look at I mean, how did all this get in my hands? And dude, they have everything, Marvel, you name it, it's there. Dude, I need like a giant bag or something. I hear prices being thrown out like $2, $3, $4, at the most $10. And these are items that should easily be like $40, $50, $60, sometimes $100. I'm just happy about the Mario Kart, seriously. But there's, dude, there's so much stuff in here, it's insane. Look what Mort just has in his hand right now. That's pretty cool. Come to find out that it's one of our buddy's friends. She has a toy store collectible. It's called Kelly's Toy Shop. Oh, no, so you know Kelly's Toy Shop, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is all her stuff that she had in the garage and the store, so she just brought it. Wipe it out. Oh, yeah. My goodness, it was it was literally just a dream come true of toys. They have everything. They even have Bucky O'Hare. You know how? I never run into Bucky O'Hare stuff, but this is one of those mornings you you hear about and you never believe. I'm a believer now. Creepiest thing, creepiest thing ever. I have to have it. We're going nuts. Everybody's going nuts. I am just throwing things into my arms. Tons of Simpsons toys, different lunch boxes, different last action hero toys. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive back in there, but before I do, I got last action hero. Brad Goodman, Superintendent Chalmers, Edna Kerbapel, and Dolph. So I'm gonna dive back in all of it for ten dollars. That's kind of a joke. It's kind of a joke for ten dollars. Not. And one of the things that really caught my eye was the Dick Tracy doll, a ten-inch doll, and also a Dick Tracy Steve the Tramp toy. Yeah, say. Tracy was an American comic strip that came out in 1931 and this really got popular in 1990 when the movie Dick Tracy came out starring Warren Beatty. Dick Tracy stuff, this is, this is madness. This is absolute, uh, an absolute gold mine. Now I love this 10 inch doll that I found of Dick Tracy because it's in mint condition. All the tags are still there. The company that made it is Applause. That tag was on there and looking clean. Also, this Steve the Tramp toy was looking perfect and minty. The cardboard was clean. And I love this figure because there's so much detail in the figure and it was made by Playmates. Big Boy's gang is finished for now, but can Tracy keep him behind bars? Find out next time. From Playmates. And if you know Playmates, sometimes they do cool things with the box or on the back of the box. And I love on the back of this box, they show a ton of information about Steve the Tramp, where he came from, what kind of weapons he uses. So I love it and I'm picking this stuff up for insanely cheap. That's the way the pursuit plays out. I am emotionally fragile. <laughs> I'm not the biggest toy guy. I'm not the biggest uh, collector of collectible like things like that. However, Fred, I always find Ren and Stimpy with you guys. I can't say no to Ren and Stimpy. Awesome. Coming up, find out what all gets purchased in this insane toy territory. And later, don't forget about Mort's glorious guests. box that I found of stuff I might buy, might not. Sealed Mario. I literally run around and grab, first thing I see is a couple Marvel toys. Grab them, throw them in. Original Wolverine, like a Bendem one from 1983. This thing's older than I am. Next thing I see, Capcom toys. Grab them, throw them in. I think I used to have this as a kid that when I saw it, I was like, dude, this is pretty sick. Ghostbusters claw. 
The next thing I see though is pretty epic. I've never seen this, and you know what? I love the chipmunks. The chipmunks were a lot of our childhood, but especially mine. I, I love the chipmunks. I have to pick this up. How many chipmunks? Well, I guess the animated series was a lot of my childhood. And this will just complete it. It was a 1984 Curtain Call Theater. The Chipmunks Curtain Call Theater comes with lots of props and backdrops. Chipmunk figures sold separately, new from Ideal. This was made by Ideal CBS Toys in 1984. This thing is sick. It's as old as I am, and truth be told, the reason I, oh, I wanted it so bad is I open it up, and the first thing I see is the chipmunk car. I'm like, I'm getting it. Ah! Another thing that caught my eye, and I know this thing is kind of pricey, was this boxed Pee Wee's Child costume. This was made in 1987, and it was distributed by J. C. Penny Pee Wee Child costume. And these are these are expensive. These are expensive. You do not see these things lying around. There's some adult costumes floating around online for some pretty hefty prices, but it's really hard to find a child one complete. So when I saw that, so I'm hoping I can get it just for a few bucks. It's beat up as all heck, but it's it's in there. The the costumes in there and the Pee Wee mask. I picked it up because I love Pee Wee Herman, and it was for sale, Francis. It's not for sale. Francis. <laughs> Toys. <laughs> I picked up everything, tons of stuff, for $35. Oh my gosh. Next thing I know, Riff comes over and runs, dude, I got everything so cheap. I could be done right now and I'd be happy. Seriously. So next thing I know, there was chaos everywhere. I'm like, dude, you know what? I'm just gonna pay. Riff's like, dude, we, we gotta go. We gotta go get at least something else. You see him walking around with this box like this, drop it in front of the lady. I start pulling this stuff out. And she's like, no worries. Um, 40 for everything? Yeah, how's that? That's fine with me. The box and everything, 40 bucks. I was like, seriously? <laughs> okay. Riff, you got 20 bucks? I had to borrow 20 from Riff though. It's still early. There's still a lot more day left in us, so this is this is shaping up really well. Hello, I'm your dream come true for you. So we just had to drop our stuff off at the car because we had so much stuff. One of the biggest scores we've ever had in a long time. Easily hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars of worth of toys for 30, 40 bucks each. God, I'm dumb. Would you stand up and walk out on me? Today at the swap meet, it just has that feel like we transported back in time. Like there's just things everywhere and we're in a good mood. I don't know what it is. Two, two pretty fun games. If you like Nintendo games, these are definitely games you would like to get in your games rooms. But it's like a time machine took us back to 2013 times the swap meet. It just felt good. I'm loving it today. So I walk into this booth and I see a few games out at the front, but I'm thinking that these are probably gonna be pretty overpriced. Uh, at the back, he had, in a case, he had Pluck for the Super Nintendo, but it looks cool. Uh, and this box is in mint condition. The game looks brand new, like you just tore the plastic off, and there it is. Are you negotiable <laughs> at all on this? He initially wanted 30 bucks for it. I got it for 25. Uh, I'll get it, 25 bucks. Still a little more than I want to pay at a swap meet, but for the condition of the box and what it goes for complete in box, I'm very happy. And this box is in like mint condition. So always down for stuff like that. So 30 bucks for all this. A Dream Pinball on Super Nintendo. Uh, it's three bucks, had to try it out. And a uh, clock for 25. <laughs> Mario Party Mike, two bucks. Nope, taking it. And the Mario Mike for two bucks. Good deal for me, 25. 25? Complete. It's in like great shape. Nice. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. 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 Wait, are you recording already? <laughs> oh, yeah. You better bet out there.
right after this, Mort lands one of the hardest to find boxes in the world of N64. They got a PS2, a PS1, a Wii controller, and songs to calm your Christian heart. Lord bless thee. Where's Metal Jesus when we get him? Metal Jesus here, and I found Alien vs. Predator Longbox on the PC. Something that got my goose going was I saw... This Mario Kart DS sheet set. Now I know, maybe you shouldn't be buying sheets from a swap meet, but I don't really care. You wash it, it's fine. Three bucks? The guy that works there says three bucks. I admit at first, I was like, nah, I don't want three bucks. I want to pay like a dollar. But then I know it's one of those items where I'd watch it back and be like, I should have picked it up for three bucks. I don't know. Three dollars? Is this worth three dollars? So I picked it up. Put it on my kid's bed, I washed it and he slept solidly last night while dreaming about Mario Kart and racing down the driveway with Mario Kart throwing some blue shells at the Koopa Troopas. Baby shark do 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 No! Ricky! This is exactly how I learned how to speak English. It's called Inglés Sin Barreros. That means English Without math? I don't know, something like that. <laughs> Conflict uh, Desert Storm 2, great multiplayer co-op series. Uh, plays best on Xbox. Three bucks, can't go wrong. Mort's finding stuff left and right. And I, am I losing the touch? Maybe I am. But, man, Mort. Mort's good. I am Mort? I am Mort. This is like a legit good spot. Got you sleeping. <laughs> no one. God bless. Like little boys. Plane and alarm, what are the chances? Hey, I was trying to go to a beach. Not a lot of games this morning, except I knew that Chris was going to be bringing some stuff for us to check out, and he did not disappoint. Chris is a guy we recently met at Retro Games Plus in Huntington Beach when we went to his store, and since then he's become a friend. And so as we get to the booth, he's just getting finished setting up, and he opens this box, and inside of the box is something for me as an N64 guy is, I would, I would argue is a bit of a holy grail. This, this is everything. Yeah, that's the dopeness of the dope right there with the figure. And what it is, is it's this gauntlet N64 uh, game complete in the box, but there's a particular amount of them that were made with this little figurine. And that little figurine and that particular make of the box is very rare, very hard to find. So uh, the best research I could tell is that this was a Target exclusive. And yep. uh, the, the ones with the figures, for a lot of N64 collectors, this is a holy grail box. I see them pop up every once in a while, and Chris had one traded into the store, and he was like, you're the N64 guy, do you want this? Especially to have the figure in and it. you are an N64 collector. I am an So N64 that is a holy grail box for so you. So when that got... I mean, come on, have you ever seen that... What the heck was that gauntlet with the little figure? That was amazing! In addition, Turok 3, really hard game to find complete in box. This box was mint, and he offered me a, a super kindness where he said, look, bring in your complete in box copy, which is not in as good as condition. Why don't you just trade me for this one that's in much nicer condition? So I'm upgrading my box, which for me, with all the boxes, is really exciting. And so, you know, the Dreamcast version of Gunbird 2 is like, what, an $80 game? When Mort 
was looking at these N64 games and even some other things he was picking up, I was thinking to myself, these are like holy grail items. Something like that? Probably. It's, it's either Gunbird or 1 or Gunbird 2. And then also Mobile Light Force 2, brand new sealed, uh, which is really a game that's it's deceptive on the cover. It looks like a, a, a junky, just sort of random game, but it's not. It's actually a big shoot 'em up. I believe it's Gunbird uh, or Gunbird 2 from the Dreamcast, uh, ported over to PS2 with a changed out cover. I'm telling you, we went in a time machine. We're back. Welcome to Retro Liberty, episode two, starring Aaron. Hey everybody, I'm Aaron. And I'm Ricky. RIP! <laughs> <laughs> This felt really good. More to Ricky and I all kind of looked at each other after and we're like, did today really feel good to you or was it just me? And we all agreed, this just felt like the good old days. You know what was good about the swap meet today? It felt like the swap meet, it felt like we got taken back seven years yeah. Yeah. before this whole boom started because this is the good old days. This will keep retro game hunting alive. I think Riff said it pretty well when he said, it's just like back in the old days, cause it was. When you have days like this, make sure to smile, never expect too much, and have a good time no matter what. Make good experiences, and the finds will come. And when they do, you rejoice like we did today. We got stuff for cheap prices, we got good stuff, it was consistent, it was fun. This is the kind of stuff you need to keep game hunting channels alive, so. I loved it, hanging out with buddies, and just being at the swamp meet. I'm off to go right away in the sunset. Really uncomfortable. <laughs> kind of hurt my leg too. <laughs> Start over. Is it Zoolander? I don't know. I am. Mm, I like that. For my episode of the Game Quest, starring RGT85 with Sean Long and Apid Eric. You see that? You got mixed skills. <laughs> okay, that's it. It's what I live for. Besides my kids and wife. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want to fight? Yeah. This have guns in it? For stuff. Dang it! I'm emotionally fragile. What the heck? Uh, is it recording? Hello. I gotta do that over, don't I? Yep. Oh, Ricky farted! <laughs> hey, it's Mort. Uh, I'm the cameraman for the rest of the day. I'm just gonna do kind of a... Oh, what a good doggy. Who's your buddy? Today? Mort Guffman! I don't know. <laughs> I always thought Ricky wasn't the brightest, but really, I was looking in the mirror. I can't even think straight. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get in the groove, bro. Duh, gabble.